All right, I think I think what I'm going to do is just I know what I felt like going to one of these sort of workshops, um, and and I, why I'm sitting down is is that I really want it to be a discussion based. Um, the reason being is that I have my viewpoints and that I'm using my viewpoints on my experiences, and so therefore to go and give you this workshop was really interesting for me. It was I found it a very challenging thing to, to put this workbook together. And I so just to tell you how I thought about it, is I thought, well, you've asked me to come in and be a teacher at your school. Okay? So I'm coming going to grade ten and I and I honestly approach every class that I teach like this. So if they've never, ever had me as a teacher before, right, then I, te I teach them as if they know nothing. They know nothing. And that's how I start off with them. And I've always done that. Always, always, always. And I've always found that the kids are so appreciative of that. Um, so, so what I'm doing here is I'm giving you a sort of strategy, in a way. So, so in a way, I'm going to give you my experiences of how I've gone from one school to another school and how I've then tried to make maths results change at a school. And for me, that's been paramount um, because at the end of the day, the subject is so important for them. And it, it's going to enable them to get so far in the future. So for me, that is really critical. So at the back of my head, I think of that the whole time. And just so that you know, is that the reason why I've, I feel as though I've got to the where I am with, as a teacher is that I always teach extra lessons. So in order to be able to I was, I'm a single mum, and so for myself to keep going with my two boys, I found I had to do the extra lessons. And I don't resent them. I don't resent them in any way because by the mere fact of my doing extra lessons, I'm learning different ways of teaching every single day. So I'm taking excellent ways that I see in other schools. So sometimes a kid will come and do a question like, and I go, wow, I've never thought of doing it that way. And I think, I think that, for me, makes teaching exciting. You know, you then try a different approach so that you walk into a classroom and you're trying a different, and you're, then it makes it a more interesting for you. It's not the same art, saying the same art, saying the same art. So, just so that I hope that you're going to get that feeling today, that you will walk away thinking, oh, maybe I could go and approach it in a different way. The only trouble with my approach, and my son will go and substantiate that enormously, is it takes one hell of a lot of work. But in the end, it's so worthwhile to see the kids' eyes light up, walk out of there, to get the messages back how they're doing at university, do you know? That sort of thing. So, so I am still currently teaching. I'm teaching AP maths. I teach at West, West for Boys High. So, and I have, on average, 55 children there. So, possibly I'm not, I do know of a big class. And, um, and so, I mean, when the, I thought that this questionnaire was hard, I think what I'm going to do is easy now. I found that questionnaire for the freak to answer this is no, this is the hardest thing I've ever come across. <laughs> because funny enough, when I looked at that and I had to think about it myself, as a teacher, which is really interesting, is priority number one is there has to be order in the class. And only at this there is order will learning take place. Because then everybody is given an opportunity to think for themselves. 
And so it was quite a, it's a really interesting questionnaire um, because one automatically wants to answer the right way by going saying, well, we want to be a motivator. But unless you have order, you can't be a motivator because you aren't able to express yourself because you're trying to all keep order all the time, you know? So it's a really interesting debate. Anyway, just so that you know, I, I found this a huge challenge today. And I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that you are going to talk to me the whole time. And how could we do this in the classroom? You know, so much of the time when you see all of this tech, as James says, well, you teach with technology. It makes it so much easier. Does it? At the end of the day, does it really? I don't think so. Because you've still got to stand there and you've still got to produce. Even though it, all it does, from my experience, it just speeds up the work. In other words, it just comes up onto the screen. You don't have to draw it. Do you, do you know what I mean? For a teacher. Um, the fact that in the classroom, they can then have the same worksheet that's on the screen. So, in a way, it enables you to teach better. Well, for me, that's how I saw it. I didn't see that I could now go and sit down. I found that I was more, I was able to interact far more. So, to use the technology, it's, it's using it so that you then are able to walk around them and be with them. So, I know I'm being spoiled today that I've got this all, and just, I'm, I'm just making you aware, when I go to West for Bonnie's, I still just teach on a blackboard. <laughs> so, do you know what I mean? So, so, I just go on to, and I'll tell you what I would do with this stuff, even though it looks lovely and you've got it on a worksheet and all of that, and you're going, freak, how can I have the time to draw it all up? They'll be jumping over the blue, and you know, that sort of thing. All right, so, now, my whole thing of teaching trigonometry is, in grade 10, the most, one of the most exciting things. Let's think about it. Have they ever done, heard about trigonometry in any other grade? No. So as I said to James, my approach to it is that they start afresh. So it doesn't matter if Joe blogs over here as weak and everything else. He's got a fresh start. So it's dependent on his background on every other topic. This is brand new. Everybody has not ever heard about it. So when I start the lesson, I go, this is your chance, kids. This is your chance to prove. Everybody's at the same place. You haven't had from that primary school, so you know more. Do you know how it is when they come in at grade eight? All of that. So that's why I love this topic. And as you are so aware, it is key to university mathematics, trigonometry. It really, really is. So, how do I know that? Purely because of teaching the AP maths, which is, you remember, first year varsity maths. And then when I do in the holidays, I take first year varsity students. Um, they come home from varsity, and then I help them with it. And then all I'm seeing all the time is trigonometry. So, for me, this was a good starting point. So, for me, okay, so, if I was at a school, and I know what happens is you get your textbook and you follow the textbook, right? I don't. Because I go to the things that count the most. Because so often we spend hours on the first part. Then when we get to trick, we have to fly through it. Meanwhile, it's the most, it's your, one of your biggest sections in paper two. You know, do you know what I mean? If you go and think about you know, you think about um, quadratic equations. Just say quadratic equations. Okay. Now, for me, that's a huge thing in grade 10. So, in grade 10, I spend hours on quadratic equations. Because then I won't have to do it so well in grade 11. Do you know that? Okay. So, so that's what I'm about. All right. So, I'm going to run through this. I'm going to show you what I have been able to do. Um because I'm head of maths, I was head of maths, and how I approached it and why I thought like this, right? 
And just so that you know, because I'm teaching at government schools now, I do know that they change the syllabus around. So, for instance, at Westport Boys, they go and do it in any order, you know, and so one mustn't feel restricted in any way that you have to follow that certain syllabus. I know that in, I think in grade 11, am I right, you write an external exam? And am I right in grade 10, 12, you start writing ex external, but it's only 11 and 12. 10 and 11. Okay. Okay, so then there's the problem. All right, let's go. So let's get started, okay? Okay, so now in front of you, what we put together is um, a file, and the purpose of the file, we foresee, we're hoping it's going to be like that for you, is that every time you come back to a course, we'll get you your notes and you'll be able to put them into that. So this could become a resource, okay? So, and, um, and then you can, you're going to take it away and then you can just bring it back each time. All right, okay. So let's go. I'm just going to go through it with you and tell you my ideas. And I've given you each a calculator. Well, it's not to take away those of mine. <laughs> okay, so here we go. All right. So what I thought about, and I'd like you to talk about it to me as well, is if I was running my, my maths department, my suggestion would be, well, let's start off and just do Pythagoras's. Pythagoras' theorem, okay? The reason being is when you get into trick, you automatically think they should know Pythagoras' theorem. And then you're quite surprised when they, they can't do it because they've forgotten it. So as you can see, I would start off with Pythagoras' theorem, okay? You're welcome to write on your sheets, all right? Okay. Just so that I give you a little bit more insight from what I'm having to do. Now, you take the first triangle that I've got there. You've got the five and the four, all right? So I would emphasize to the children, this is the three, four, five triangle, and the way five is the hypotenuse. Now, can I just show you why it is critical that they know the three, four, five triangle? In the NBT, which is National Benchmarking Test, which I do the training, and I will be this weekend starting, is because they're not allowed to use a calculator, which triangle are they going to use every time? Three, four, five. Every single time. So in a way, when you are making worksheets for them, it would be so valuable to always make it three, four, five. Because then they start to learn it off by heart. So what if it's the same? It's the concept that's important. Now, the three, four, five triangle in the MBT, if you go and look at my next one, B, all right? The children, if you've gone and shown them three, four, five, if I can get you to encourage them not to see the pipe bag there, is to see the enlargement that it was originally from the three, four, five. And what have they done to each side? They've enlarged it by a factor of two, so they've times it. So now when I'm training in the MBT, I have to say this to not for everybody. They don't, they will go, oh, yeah. Meanwhile, do you see if you're doing the trick, it's similar triangles. So when you've got good kids and you sort of just go and say similar triangles and they're carrying on to grade 12, they do remember that. And oh, so we've already heard that in grade 10, you know, and then the lights come on later on. It just makes it go much quicker. All right. So the whole purpose is twofold. One, going over Pythagoras' theorem. Secondly, seeing the enlargement of the 3, 4, 5 triangle and getting them to try and recognize that rather than having to pick up a calculator to do it. All right. So you can see I've made up the questions in such a way, you know, going and looking at the 20 and the 25. How do you see? What have you done to the 5? Times it by 5. Um, and then what have you done to the 4? Do you see? And then they can go and give the result. And there, this is what they give. Now, then I gave a 9 and a 12. Well, I would expect them to use a calculator then, all right, to go and do that one. That one isn't asked in the MBT, it isn't, okay? All right, now, let's go to the next one, okay? Now, you'll see how different I am to the text form, all right? So we started with Pythagoras with just a straight triangle. Now, my approach in teaching mathematics is, is often 
we try to teach what you're going to say, Trish, now you've gone against. But do you see, we did Pante, and then suddenly we go into the trick. Now what have I done? I've drawn up a Cartesian plan, and what am I encouraging them just to do here? Pythagoras' theorem. So I'm showing them that it can be in a triangle form, or it can be in the Cartesian straight away. And do you see, I've put, kept it so simplistic that they're learning one little thing that it doesn't make it hard for them to do. So they're able to just go and use your um, Pythagoras' theorem. Happy with that? Okay, so that's how I think about it. All right? Okay. Then you can see um, you've got number three. Now, my thinking behind this is to show you that what happens in the NBTs. Okay, they can't use a calculator. So in these triangles, I wouldn't want them to use a calculator. The numbers are small enough so that they don't have to. Happy? And so I would give this, so do you notice I'm just keeping to Pythagoras' theorem so that they get really confident in one area before I go on to the trigonometry so that I, they're not having to worry about the Pythag and the trig. They're now good at Pythagoras' theorem. So then when I introduce the topic of trigonometry, they're not going to have to worry about that. That's been sorted out. Do you see? Okay. All right. Um, Okay, then, very difficult. Now, I would assess my class, but I think you have mixed ability. Okay, am I right? Mm -hmm. So you have mixed ability. So you've got to give your brighter kids something to do extra. I would do it with the weaker ones. Because if they want to continue with mathematics, they're going to have to do these. So do you see, I've introduced hard wording here. All right? So I've said express the y coordinate in terms of m. Do you agree you would only be doing that in grade 11? Do you agree? Now I've introduced it here because I'm only doing it with one item. I'm now finding, using Pythagoras' theorem there, but using a letter and expressing it in terms of, of m. All right. Okay. So let's go on. All right, now, interesting. I, I, I really enjoyed doing this, everyone. Okay, so what I did here is, do you agree you all introduce sine, tan, cos all at once? Do you agree? All at once. So now what happens to them? They can't remember it. They can't remember. So you're going, right, this is sine, you write it up, okay? And you go tan... And then you go, oh, it's sine, cos, tan. And then we all come up with these ideas, do you agree? I don't even know them all. But you're going to go, so, some of you do Sokotoa or what's some old hens, cackle and, what is it? Yeah. X-ray or whatever. <laughs> so, so the thing is, for me, that I do not do and never have. Okay, So it's always the kids who come to me. For extra lessons that they're going, I just want you to be able to write it down. Okay, so what I've done is I would introduce tan, okay, because I don't know whether you're aware of this, but tan was the original trick. So um, I was quite interested in this trigonometry. So if I could just show you where it came from, it, it's quite Great. I used to teach it like this to my kids. So what happened is, it was the Egyptians who introduced it. And it'll make sense to you. It really does. And so what they noticed with your sundial, or whatever, okay, that they took a radius. And way back, before we came to Euclidean geometry, they saw that if they drew a tangent, just with the eye, that they notice that this is 90, and do you agree we don't have a theorem for it? It's a fact. Do you know what I mean? There's no theorem. Like the other ones we prove, a theorem. But this one's just a fact. Now, you join it. Right? So here's your tangent. So I often just show them where it came from. Then there's your radius. 
So you can imagine, no compasses, no protractors, no nothing, right? So they looked at this angle there. And it's quite interesting for kids to see this. They looked at that angle and they saw, okay, let's take it to be 30 degrees. So we'll have that as 30. And so I've done this before, and it really helped the kids to understand trigonometry, where it was coming from. So if I took this to be 30, and I said that this length was, um, let's say, 4, okay? Right? And then I go, and I'm going to work out this. Well, we know that with 30 degrees, tan of 30, isn't that 1 over root 3? So do you agree I would automatically go and give them the measurement there, okay, approximately, so therefore that's going to be 4 root 3, happy? So I'd give it to them as a decimal, and then I would go and draw another one, and I'd go and say, all right, let's take that 30 degrees again, right, and now I made this 6. And then I, because I'm the maths teacher, would have constructed it accurately, all right? And then I would get them to measure that and get a ballpark, which is obviously going to be 6 root 3, but they won't know that. And then I tell them to put that over that on their calculators. And what will they notice? It will come to the same, same ratio. So now they said, all right, so now you just draw a whole lot of pictures. Now, now. How are you going to go and express this phenomenon to somebody? So now you've got a circle, now you're excited. You found out that you take the radius, you take the tangent, right? And if you have this length and this length, every time it's 30 degrees. And you're going, I'm a freak. I found out like the other day, I had a kid, he said, I'm oh, finding maths. <laughs> <laughs> so first year last team with the student, he said, I'm actually finding maths with you, man. We're finding out new things. <laughs> I said, I wish my boy. <laughs> so, so now the thing is, is how are you going to go and describe that to someone? What if they're blind? Do you know what I mean? And what if they, well, if they know maths now? That's what I say to kids. How are you going to explain it? So why did they bring up the word tangent? Because it originated from tangent is the one that's opposite the angle you work for, and that's all they work for, and when they're using the radius. So that's why they said, all we're going to do is bring a word in. So it's not a function of any set. It's just a word that's telling you which two sides you are using with respect to the angle. That's all it is, and I keep reminding them again and again and again that that word tan is not times to the theta, which sometimes the kids think, you know, they think it's times. Meanwhile, all it is is an English word, right, that's telling you which two sides you use. And funny enough, just a little bit more history. So, they just used tan the whole time. And it actually was the Hindus who went and said, why are we only working with the opposite and the adjacent? Why? Why are you only doing that? Because now I do. And they then went and brought sign into it. So the spelling is S-I-N-E, is from the Hindus. And so that word is just telling you which two signs. And your top kids actually find that fascinating, that that's where it's originated from. And then sometimes my top kids will go and ask me, well, why is it cosine? So, at the moment, we've got two words. We've got tangent, we've got sine, and then we go to cosine. And how I show them that cosine is, because we don't do Latin anymore, and our English is from Latin, is if you think about the CO, you go and think about it. How many times? We use the CO in English. Let's think about it in geometry. You do co for interior, right? Happy? Now, co interior in geometry means that they're on the same side of the transversal degree and between the same parallels, right? You know, just cooperative, you know, co. So the co, obviously in Latin, is meaning 
together. All right? Watch this. This is what I do. I don't know whether you can do this. I'm sure you do. So I go. Right. If I put this, if I went and said that was theta, right? And I'm going to put this as A and B and C, right? No, let me do it as a degree because this is what I showed the kids. Sorry. So I show this in grade 10. Okay, okay. That's 30 degrees, right? What's this degree here? Okay. It drives me stark, staring, mad when they move together. I'm that, 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 Plus five, 30, and because I'm so strict, they're not allowed to use a calculator. So if any of my lessons, nobody's allowed to use a calculator because of the NPTs. You see there's no calculator. So then they go 90 plus, and then you can see them counting on their fingers, the whole 2T, and I'm going, what? If this is 90, and the total is 180, what will these two add up to? 90, and then I'm trying to make them into rather thinking like that, right? So now, I'm going to go and put the 60 there, okay, up there, and we'll have an A, a B, and a C. So then what I ask them, so I'm digressing a bit, just to show you. So then I go and say to them, what is the side? 30 degrees. Express that. So they'd go B over C, okay? And then I'd say, all right, what is the cos of 60? So cos is your adjacent over your hypotenuse, so it'll be B over C. And I say, look at that. The sine of 30 is the same as the cos of 60. Do you agree? And then that's when I go and I say to the kids, well, that's why it's called co sine. Because co from concurrent. So I always find that's so smart. So smart that they didn't go and think of another word. They went and they are related, very much so. And they are so smart in saying that that sign, so you've got sign, and they co-sign, because they're complementary, and aren't they in together? Just like co-interior. And so that's why I go and do it like that. So I do, I do go and show them that, even at a grade 10 level. Um, they find it fascinating, because they, some of them will now remember why this is not really just cos, it is cosine, in fact. Um, and then they also, if you can see, they start to understand the fact that this is the 90. They get a better idea of a 90 rather than you just take it. Right. Okay, so that's my introduction to trigonometry. So let me go back and show you. So what I would be doing here is I would only do tan. Yes, yes. Yeah? They have a question on them. I can see on the sign. The question is how do you explain the B or C? Are you going to use the algorithm or? I would just use an algorithm. Just use an algorithm. Yeah. No. <laughs> no, well, you see, the thing is, what happened is, what I was trying to say is that the word tangent came from the fact that they identified that that side over that side was always the same ratio with respect to that angle. So, so the Hindus then brought up another word to tell you which sides you're using. Do you see? So, so there isn't an explanation or a proof or anything like that because it's just a word to tell you. So no one needs a proof for it. Do you see? Happy with that? Okay. All right. So going to the, I don't know what page you are. My pages are different because on the one one I have to. Okay. So we are on a tangent. 
you go. Page two. Oh yeah. Okay. Page four. Now, if I can just give you some other things to think about, because I just know what the textbooks are all about. Okay. And I don't. I never used a textbook. Okay. I've never taught out of a textbook. I take textbooks, and I take the best out of each textbook. So, like, if you ask me, Trish, I met up with another maths teacher the other day, and she's still teaching at Kersley. And I said, Linus, there is one section that you've got to go and change into your school, and you've got to use this textbook. And I told them it's the clever, if you haven't gone, it's the clever textbook in grade 12. That clever textbook on your double angles and your compound angles is outstanding. It is phenomenal. Absolutely brilliant. Then the other part about Clever Man's, all right, that I noticed is in the Clever Man's textbook is the calculus section. And I'll tell you why I love the calculus section. You know how I know, do you think I'm doing the grade 10 syllabus here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah. If I can just tell you what else in Clever is, is the calculus. I find that the other textbooks is that they don't have enough questions on for the children to go and find the equation of a tangent to occur. I find they skip over that. And if you know that is one thing in the CAPS document that they have to know, and that is one thing, one question that they have to ask, they have to ask it. They have to ask for an equation of a tangent to occur. And I've, I've done mind action, you know, classroom mathematics. I'm afraid I'm not a fan of platinum. Mm. I don't like platinum mm. at all. Not at all. Um, I'm sorry, I don't mean to be horrible. I just find it's been on the ground um, from example point of view. Um, so. Yes, the <laughs> so, okay. So, anyway, so, so, okay, so, I, I don't know, oh, I know, because I don't follow textbooks, excepting I do use them, you know, to get ideas, and then I try and put it together in my own style. So, if you can look at this for tan, so what I've done here is I'm trying to get the children to see it's not just right angle triangles. It's also on a Cartesian thing. Right, now what I do to teach trigonometry, I know that in the textbooks they're teaching the kids to go O over H, A over H. Right? When I teach, I do both. Because in fact the definition for tag, the actual definition, is Y over X. The O over the A is purely a help in a right angle triangle. So you can see how old I am. In my day, we were only taught y over x. So do you know what I had to do? I had to take a triangle and place it on a Cartesian plane. And then I could see the y, the x, and the r. So we lost sight, but it's not a bad thing. It's just that when you get to university, they are very interested in definitions. So the children are so into O and A and O and H that they then when they're talking, they're talking about Y and X rather. Then they go, just Y, you know? And so how I write it down is I do this. I go tan theta is equal to, and my first one is Y over X. I write that. And I write it on the board every single time. And then I go, O over A. I do it religiously. I do not learn, let them learn the one without the other. And so now, the reason, so they're going to say to me, man, when will you use O over A? And when will you use Y over X? So I say, you use O over A in a right angle triangle, right? And you're going to use Y over X in the Cartesian way. And so what I've done here is I've just developed it in such a way that, do you see you've got it mixing it up all? 
the time. I'm not just keeping it in a single. I don't comp I don't put them in compartments. That's not a great idea to have them. For me. This is all my point of view. I hope you realize this. Okay. All right. So, as you can see, I've done a worksheet for you. If you want to use some of the ideas, you're welcome to it. Notice. Um, okay, this is a big thing. All right, so can you just have a calculator with you, and I'll show you what, exactly what I do here. Yeah. All right, so, I'm lucky I've got a calculator here. All right. Now, what I do is I feel as though I have to stand up. Okay, okay. So, in the textbox, they go and ask you to find the value of tan So the child goes and writes down what tan is. So can you see, in order to find tan meter, they're going to have to do Pythagoras. Happy? So do you see, I keep making them think all the time. So they can go do Pythagoras theorem, so they can do it in their heads. Particularly for yours, I've tried to make it so that they can do everything in their heads. So you don't have to rely, except I'm going to use it now. So now we've got your four minus one going to get to be root three. Now, the beauty about doing that all the time is I'm actually using the special angles the whole time. Now, the reason why I introduced the special angles in grade 10 big time, so that they're not using the calculator, why? NBTs. If they're going to go and do an engineering course, can't use calculator For maths, don't calculate. They're allowed to use in science, they're not allowed to come in an engineer. So what we're doing is a disservice to our very brown kids. Because if they're utilizing a company the whole time, they're going to really go at university. Right. So, so yeah. So what I've done now is you're going to have it as root three. Okay. So now I don't tell them that this is a special triangle. So I've got this as root three. Okay. So I would have written that tan theta. Is. Now I'm going to be using opposite over adjacent, so we're going to have 1 over root 3. Okay. Notice at the same time, so now I don't go to the next one, right? because they're actually fascinating. It's brand new to me. I say, pick up your calculators, right? and I go and teach them, we want to find the degree that's there. So what I do is say, pick up your calculators, and I go and show them. And I, I mean, I didn't have this when I was teaching. I don't have it, so I have to go and say it to them. And so then I'm just going to go shift, which you know, all right, and your tan, and then do 1 over root 3, right? And then our prints, what are we going to get it to be? We're going to get it to be 30 degrees. And they love that. You cannot believe how useful this calculator is to begin with. So now I'm going to tell them, and I'll tell them immediately then. Now I'm going to tan 30 and they get 1 over root 3 on the calculator. In fact, they don't. You do realize you don't. You get root 3 over 3. All right. And then you've got to go through the whole explanation of why it's not 1 over root 3. All right. So, what I'm just emphasizing here is please make them in each one go backwards and forwards, just going from the one to the other. So, it doesn't matter how long you spend on it. As I said to James, he said to me, Ma, why did you develop this curriculum as you've done? So, I develop it so that I'm supporting grade 11. The grade 11 syllabus is enormous. So, in fact, what I do is I cut down on the grade 10 syllabus. And I only do the things that are going to support you in grade 11. So that you don't have as much work to do. Because so often, if you go to the grade 10 syllabus, and you look at it, you could actually dumb down it into grade 9. Do you, know, do you know what I mean? There's some things that are so easy that could be taken down to grade 9. So you're going to see that, that I go all the way to grade 12 trick here. So I'd rather spend longer on trick and functions. So these are the things that I would spend long. I'd spend a long time on trick. I'd spend a long time on functions. And I'd spend a long time on geometry. Okay. And that's what I would do um, in order to get here. So, so, and I do, so you may say, can the grade teens cope with this? They cope with it beautifully. They can go all the way. All right, so I'll just run through the other things quickly. So I do tan properly. 
and I'm not mixing them up. Do you know what I mean? I'm not doing tan and sign and cos. So they're getting the idea on one thing. And then they do see by doing one thing, are they learning what tan is? Yes. They're getting tan as y over x because they're not having to go. Is it this one? Is it that? And they don't learn a run. They learn one thing and they learn it properly. And so then you can see I've done exactly, if you just look at the books, all right, um, I've gone through and I'll just run all the way. I've given you quite a lot here to work with, okay? Um, and if we go, I've done then the same with sine, and I've done sine on its, on its own, you see? And then I've gone and done um, cos on its own, happy? Yes. All right. Then what I do is if you go to page 13, right. page 13, so now do you see I've mixed the exercise? So, and I do a lot of that, is I, I mix it up all the time. Um, because then you, you're keeping it all relevant, you're keeping them thinking the whole time, um, going backwards and forwards, and, and that's what's really important. Right. Okay, let's just go on to, right, now, no calculator. Okay, this is page 2015. Page 15. Okay, 15. This is not my brains. This page 15. This page 15 is brilliant. It's not my brains. So I can say it. <laughs> I can't tell you how kids do not understand that trigonometry is a ratio. So they don't understand that if you've got 2 over 5, it could be 4 over 10. Do you see? They don't get it. Okay. And that's where I score in extra lessons. Because I saw this exercise at another school and I went, oh my gosh, that is brilliant. It's not in a textbook. It's nowhere. So I've put it in here and I actually do it in grade 10 and in 11 again. I can't tell you how hard they will find it. But it is so worthwhile to do it because they then start to see that it's a ratio and that they don't need the degree. So if I can recommend it, it is a really good exercise. Um, they don't find it easy. They find it exceptionally hard to do this exercise. Okay? Alright, now, then on page 16, is I've gone to doing all four quadrants, which you do do in grade 10. I am right about that. You do it in grade 10, all right? But then I have gone even more into it. So I don't know how many of you use the unit circle anymore. Do you know what I mean by the unit circle? Um, I use it big time, and you can see that on page 17. Okay, so I get them to know what the sign of north degrees is. Off well, this, I don't let them use their calculator at all. Do you see? I'm trying to encourage them not to use the calculator the whole time. So that's your unit circle, and I've drawn it up there for you. Right, now why have I done that? Okay, because of trick rocks. Okay, now all of us teachers do not like to. Trick rocks, you must admit. Even the text box is really weak on it. You know, they just touch on it. Now, if I can just say to you, it is key, it's becoming key in our trick exam. They're going to start placing more and more importance on their trick rocks. Because at university, in any design, in any music, are you aware that in music, you're using trick rocks? So that's what it is. So for instance, where I know about it is luckily my youngest son is a chemical engineer and he just gave me insight as to the maths that he uses. 
In certain times, it's quite nice to say this to kids because they go, oh my gosh. But conceptually, I can't even think about it. So he said to me, Mom, I have to design a pipeline. So this is one of his projects in his chemical engineering that's going to take a fluid from Durban to Johannesburg. So I said, okay, my brain. my brain's failed already. Just free. It's such a big task, I can't even get him. So then he said to me, now mom, what if there is a, a leak in the pipe? How am I going to find that leak? So I said, well, you stop digging. <laughs> I said, give me a clue. <laughs> Please give me a clue. Guess what it is? A sound wave, which is a trick rod, is sent through the pipeline, and as soon as it gets to the hole, yeah. it's going to do that. Now, you see, kids are not told about the value of mathematics because they don't, they go, I bet you they keep asking you, what the am I doing? <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah. When am I ever going to be using yeah. this? <laughs> and then when they hear a story like that, then they go, Mm, okay, <laughs> but it won't be, be me doing it, you know, be the real boss who's doing it. So, so the thing is, is, um, is that trick props is a huge area, it really is in design, uh, especially for your music, right, and so obviously the sound waves. And when kids hear that, they then, you know, those of them who are aspiring to be engineers, um, you know, they're really interested. They go, oh, it makes sense, you know, and then it's just interesting. So, all right, so now I, I then, okay, now to do the trick rocks, I'm going to have to stand up and show you. You have no idea how important trick rocks are in the NBTs. Kids don't do others. So, so because we're letting them use a calculator all the time, they have no feeling for graphs, nothing. So when I teach, even my group lessons on a Friday, nobody's allowed to use a calculator at all. No. Okay. So now I go and say to them, "What's the sign of naught? What's the cos of ninety degrees?" The way that I teach it, and I teach in grade 10, is they immediately have to know how to draw the sine graph off by heart. So each time, so in other words, so I don't need to stand up, say I give them, and particularly for grade 11, say I give them a sine, theta is equal to 1. So what I teach is if they're equal to 1, or if I have sine theta is equal to naught, or if I have sine theta equal to negative 1. Any of those numbers, right? I say you should never pick up your calculator, and you should be able to do it by inspection. And what they get used to doing, and even my private lessons, and they really like this. So the reason why I'm telling you is because of my private lessons, I can see what the kids like taking away from me and what they like with their teacher. Do you know what I mean? Which is interesting for me. So I can see, oh, they liked what I showed them this, but they prefer what their teacher does in that area. So then I start to learn, you know, which is better. So that's better, so let me take that in my teaching practice because they find that, they understand that better. So here, yeah, so immediately what they do for me every time is they do that and they quickly draw the sign graph and then they go, oh, okay, the sign of 90 is one. So I just use that the whole time for all of these. All right, so if you go back to my exercise here, I don't know why I've left it. Uh, let me just go down. Okay, you wait, you wait. It. Okay, yeah. All right. So, to give them this, so you're going to say, well, why did I do this? Okay. 
with my trig graph. So I go and draw that for them. And then I highlight the 90. And then immediately below, you can see I will go and get them to draw one themselves. So to get the feeling of it. All right? Okay. Um, and, and then the cos graph is the same. And then the same with tan. All right. Now, just to show you something else. Okay, here. If you go to page... Um, 30, 20 in your box, right? Okay, solving for x. So now you can see every time I'm going to make them draw the trick graph so they get used to it. And the fact that this is drawing, I tell them which they're going to work out. Well, think about which graph you're going to draw here. And so we're going to go 0, 90, and we draw it. And you're not allowed to pick up a calculator. Now you've drawn it, so now you can see why my question is there. Not allowed to pick up a calculator. So you've got the sine of x is equal to naught. What are your values? So you're learning to read off a graph at the same time. Do you see you're not picking up a calculator? So you're reading off, so sine x equal to naught, then they'll go and tell me. Sine x equal to 1, sine x equal Now, do you see what I've done for them there? I've said sine x equals 2. Then they get the idea and seeing the graph that the range is only from minus 1 to 1. So by looking at the graph, they know that sine x is equal to 2 is no solution. Whereas when you just go and do it on your, I don't know, I'm sure you laugh about this every time, you give it and you see them going shift sign 2 degree and then they get error. So then they clear it. You know how they go with their finger? Then they go, shift, sign, two. They look again, they go, oh! <laughs> and then I just kill myself laughing because they think that the calculators, there's something wrong, you know? Yeah. And if you show it graphically, then they can go and see and then do it on the calculator with them to show them what the calculator's response is going to be. They then go, oh, okay. Do you see? So. So it's very good not to teach in isolation, you know, just taking the one and not showing the graph and to try and show the graph. So, so as you can see, that was it. And I, I wouldn't do any more than that. Those would be my questions on using the graph. And you can see in this worksheet, I've gone and done cos and then I've gone and done the tan. All right. Okay. All right. Then looking at 21, if you go to page 21. Okay, so here, so I actually would go in a, on a chalkboard, and if I was teaching sine x equals a half, I would have drawn the graph up for them and said, let me join, let me draw the line y equal to a half. Which is good for them while like, doing straight lines. So, so do you see going over the straight line with them? So they're not just doing it in isolation. Pick up your calculator, shift sign a half, key angle, degree, write it out with me. There's no what's this all about? You're not giving them any meat in their learning. You're not showing that you could go check it with a graph. So here, yeah. and I do do this, because this takes me no seconds, no, no time to draw, because you're just drawing your axes, you're just putting in your 90, 180, 270. You then go and draw it, right? You've got your 1, you've got your minus 1, right? So, in your lesson, it starts to become more interesting, because at the same time, you can go and ask them, what's the range? So, yes, you may say, well, freak, we're not getting through the syllabus. Yes, you are. You're getting through the syllabus like you cannot believe because you're now talking about the range in a lesson. So, you are revising all their maths the whole time. It's more interesting for you. It's not you just going and saying, all right, kids, right? Okay, what are you going to do? Is this in standard form? Yes, it is. Right? Now, what are you going to do? Pick up your calculator, shift sign. Of a half, yes, on the screen, yes, it's a positive acute angle, 30 degrees, right, that's your key angle. Which quadrants are we in? Right? 
Happy? Now you get the graph. You draw the graph. You've got your graph drawn. You now go to another graph. You draw a line from this path. Okay, so now your graph is not going to be as accurate as this, and nor with mine. In my West for Boys, I can assure you, they look so untidy. <laughs> but now, do you see what you're teaching a kid? Is that equation for higher maths is the intersection between two graphs. In one little question, think about how much you have taught those kids. One little question. You've taught them range. You've taught them to draw a graph of trig, to get that basic graph right, to go and draw a straight line graph, to remind them of what that y equals a half is like, right? Do you see? Yeah. And now, you've also shown them that you have the one graph equal to the other, and so you're doing points of intersection. So now, so yours, your way of doing it is better than mine, because now, if you didn't even show them the answers, you'd say, well, we can see it's a number here. And we can see it's a number here. Now there's 90. Well now, let's guess what these numbers are. And do you agree, you need that guessing for estimation, which we don't like doing for of us. I don't know, I don't like it. But now the more I start to teach, I realize, especially for MBTs, how estimation is critical. So now, okay, we say it's a number between 0 to 90. Okay, let's have a game. Let's see who gets the closest. Do you know what I mean? I mean, your classes are so huge. But just write down an answer. What do you think it is? Do you know what I mean? Write it down on the piece of paper. And then go, okay, let's pick up our calculators. And now you go shift, sign, a half, right? And then they can see. And there was a number between. 0 to 90. The other thing that I find, that often in my lessons, the teachers don't make the kids aware, is that this, yeah, and my kids all go, what? But that is quadrant one. And so you don't connect it, do you see? So in quadrant one, isn't sign always a positive? So there aren't all the values positive. And then I go and I write, well, that's quadrant one. What's this quadrant? Quadrant two, right? Then I show them there is quadrant three. And then they say quadrant four. And then when you're teaching it, you can go and say, all right, haven't we done this already? Isn't it? A is, okay, is, uh, okay, I'm sorry, is T, C. So now we're dealing with sign. So sign in the first quadrant was a plus, sign in the second is a plus, sign in the third, negative, negative. So I know it's hard teaching, but it's actually so good for one because you're stimulating it so much by going through a variety of, of things. I think you're all getting tired. I can see this. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think also that uh, so it's just that you are not talking about it yet, but it should be that you are not talking about it yet, but it should be that you are not talking about it yet, but it should be that you are not talking about it yet, but it should be that you are not talking about it yet, but it should be that you are not talking about it yet, but it should be that you are not talking about it yet, but it should be that you are not talking about it yet, but it should be that you are not talking about it Okay, so as you can see, I, I would, I've headed that to page 21, and I've said it is, no calculator, right? Okay, just because we're going to end just now, so now you're going to say, how are you doing these equations with no calculator? So I've been, so I've been going and doing a lot, and I've missed out, because a lot of it will be no calculator. All right, so, so I'm going to give you... I'm hoping that this is going to, you haven't seen it before. Um, I'm actually quite proud of it, and I derived it using 
this idea. Do you know the fan with the special angles? Yeah. How how do you all teach the special angle? Do you just teach the triangles? So, you know, you've got your triangles, and so you can go and say that that's 30 degrees, right? So opposite the 30 is always one, and then you've got your two, and then you've got your root three, right? Happy? And then you I do separate triangles, even though they are the same one, right? So I do 60, and then there's going to be root three, and then you've got one, a two and a one, and you've got your 45. What do you all do for the 45? I, I do this as root 2, root 2 and 2. Is that, is that how you do it? Okay. All right. So who, who does the fan? We call it the fan. So we go and that's going to be 30 degrees, right? 60 is that you read? Yeah. Happy 45, 60. Is that what you all use? So I do it. Okay, good. Okay, so this is what I, I teach. Okay, this is what I do. Okay, because they've got to know it off by heart for the NBTs. So they may as well start doing it in grade 10. So they may as well learn it and they may as well just do special angles the whole time. So I simply go sine, cos, tan. Okay? Draw. And then we go in order 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60. Okay? Right, then we go over 2, over 2, over 2, over 2, over 2, over 2. Right? And then we write one, two, three, three, two, one. And then we just do the square root of the one, which is one, square root, square root, square root, square root. Now, the reason why I like this is they have a grid. So now if you think about it, they all know that for sine and cos, it's always going to be over 2, so they've already got that ratio. And then sine, 30, is the first one. So then it's 1. Then 45 is the second in the row, do you see, in the column. So then it's going to be root 2. Then um, 60 is the third. So, in fact, I make them know it off by, by heart because it's not hard to go and learn. I find the grid slightly easier, all right, to go and see it. Are you happy? Now, it's a, such an interesting story how this happened to me. To get, do you agree where, do you know where I've derived it from? So it was obvious and then I went into this. And so then when I got to the, uh, I was doing it with a boy who was, had to pass maths. And it was the last term. And so I spotted, right? And so then I got to tan and this boy, I said to my boy, I wasn't thinking properly because I just thought of this and I was so excited to see it work out. And then I got to the tan, I failed. I got into class the next morning, top set. I said, look at this. They all went, oh my gosh, man. And then a boy, I said, but the thing is, I failed with the tan. And the boy just put up his hand, like you said. And he just went, man. And I said, what, my boy? He said, man, what is tan? I said, who's the teacher here? He said, tan is what? Y over X. And isn't sign Y over R. X over R. So tan is y over x. So you just take the top number over that. So it's 1 over root 3. Then it's going to be 1 because you're doing root 2 over root 2, which is 1. And then you're doing root 3 over 1. And in fact, just watch, which makes sense. Yeah. It makes so much sense. That goes 1, 2, 3. Look at the bottom. 1, 2, 3. 3, 2, 1. 
So, so now, for training your kids, so why can I go and do the equations easy with special names? Don't have to pick up a calculator, it's so much better. So the fact that I have sine x equal to a half. So I've got sine x equal to a half. Because I make them draw this every time, so they're not allowed to use a calculator. So they draw it up straight away at the beginning of the lesson. Doing any trick, grade 11, grade 12, come to me here, I will not let them use their calculator. So they draw it up straight away. Some of them now know it off by heart, which is great. So do you see how easy it is? Because now you're going to go to the side row, you see? Mm -hmm. And you're now looking for a half. So there's your half. So what's your key angle? 30 degrees. So nice this table. Because you don't have to use a calculator at all. Okay? Alright, so as you can see, the worksheet I've made up on page 21 is every single one of them is to do with a special angle. And please look in grade 10. I solve for x, where x is an element from 0 to 360. So I go and do all four quads. I don't go and just do in the first quadrant. Why? Because you haven't got enough time in grade 11. And also, do you agree, they go so fast through this basic of doing four quadrants and then going straight into general solution. Okay? All right? And then uh, I just gave you a sheet. All right, on solving equations. Um, I even go so far as, as if you're looking at this one. Okay. Here, you may wonder, do you actually do this in grade 10? And I go, yes, I do. So go and look. I go and say x minus 10 degrees. Do you see? Which we just stick to x. Um, I don't go and use 2x and 3x because that changes your period. And that's tricky. So are you going to get all the correct answers? Do you see? So notice up, I've kept the coefficient of x as, as 1 because then the periods stay exactly the same. But I do do that because then I go and how I do these is that the children have to write this down and I make them write at the top, that is angle. And then I teach them on my Cartesian plane. Right? So they go and they say, in this quadrant, it's angle equals key angle. In this quadrant, it is angle equals 180 minus key angle. In this one, it is angle equals 180 plus. And then angle. I don't go and just say it's theta because this is what? Do you see? So that's why I keep it as an angle. So that when you come to the next year and you're doing sine 2x is equal to a half, they now know that they're right above there. That is your angle. And then they don't go and get it wrong. You know how often they go and write next to x minus 10 equals your key angle, and then they get it all wrong. Okay. Okay? Right, now trig graphs. The trig graphs. Okay, this is a tough one. Okay. Teaching trig graphs is very, very, very difficult. Okay. The best is with technology. But we don't have it. Alright. So now, if you look at what I've done here. Okay. I'm sorry, I left out the y equals. So, the first thing I would have done is I've drawn up the basic sign graph. So next to this, in class, okay, I would have drawn this table up. They I think you have to get them to copy it, don't you? Because you can't have that many worksheets. Am I right? You've only got a certain allocation, am I right? Yeah. You've got? Oh, is that? Okay, alright. So, so the thing is, so then 
what we're going to do is, is do the sign of naught and find an ordered pair, if you see what I mean. Now, why I do this table is that they worked out the sign of naught. So if you put naught here, you've got the sign of naught. And what was the sign of naught? They can see it there. And then they go naught times the two. And then what happens with them is your really bright kids go, oh, what do we, what do we do to this line to get this line? What do we simply do? Oh, we just times by, by two. And then they go, and then you say, and then before you know it, what have they done? Filled in the whole thing. Do you know what I mean? Then what I would do is, as you can see here, I've said sketch one and two from the table above. So that's exactly what I've done here, which I probably would have to do it because there's not enough time. So as you can see, they would have seen that there, and I've drawn the original graph, right? And now we're going to draw it, okay? And then what I find is they start to see, what have you done to this graph to get to that? And then you can go and talk about amplitude and all of that. Right. So that's how I uh, approach I approach trick graphs, and I hope I've given you quite easy stuff to do. Okay, and I do it all the way through. I spend a long time on trick graphs, and then if you look at the end, okay, page is thirty-three. Is that I don't find that there's enough in the textbooks of finding the equation. Um, if I can show you something else, all right, yeah, you can see I'm so used to a board, all right, if I go, okay, all right, what if I was asked to draw this graph? You see, the problem is, is that kids can go and use the table on their calculator. Now, you get to the university, and all the kids ask me is they've got to draw graphs without calculator, and they've got to draw them fast. So, we're not doing the kids any favors by allowing them to draw on the table. Our words understand, just keeps them quiet, and then they get on. They're learning nothing about the graph. Nothing. So, if I can show you little patterns that start to occur. Okay. Right, so, let me go to one. Alright. Now, this gets asked in the NBTs. So, if I was going to go and draw this graph, yeah. The cos x, as you all know, it shifts up one. So we've got it there. Happy? Alright. Now, that was the graph, green, was y is equal to cos x plus one. What was the maximum value? Two. Do you agree the max is two? Do you agree? Happy? What's the min value? Zero. Now, if I took another graph, and I'll do it in another color, that's where I have an advantage. Okay, with this. If I draw the graph y is equal to cos x minus one, so we're shifting it down one. Okay, sorry, let me just lift it up. Okay. okay. What's the maximum value? Zero. So that's your max. What's your minimum value? Now, what if you're in an NBT and the question asks you, in the NBT, you've got a multiple choice answers. You've got four answers. You're asked 
for the way you are. What you next to that? What are you gonna do? You throw the ball, right? Or check. Take that number and add to that. What do you get? Take that number, do the opposite sign of it, and add to that. Done. Take that. Take that number, add it to that zero. Do the opposite sign. Negative what? Minus one. So you can see how did I work that out? Had full set, great tens, they will struggle. Okay? So, and I enjoy that because it challenges me to go and think of a way how am I going to get them to get them? They all want to go through maths, right? What am I going to do? And then I was just standing back and I was looking at all of them and I was going, there it is. So I do write notes for my kids, okay? And so like in an ABT, that is critical. Most of them do not know that. They don't know. So today I was doing with them a trick. Okay, now watch this. This was a question in the IMB paper. It was um, 20, 2012. 2012. Was this? <laughs> I love a board. So I go right on the board. You see how I want you to go right on the board. <laughs> so today this question okay, was, it went x squared plus y squared. Um, I'm going to forget the, I'm sure it was minus 4x cos x plus 8x sin x. Okay, plus some number, 3, I've got, I don't need it. Okay, equal sort. That was in the IME paper, in matric. That is a question, right? What is it? It's a circle, right? The question asks them to go and prove that the highest value that this expression would be is the square root of 13. Okay? So they had to say that this would not exceed the value of it, the square root of 13. So I rewrote in circle form. This is what I came up with. I got r squared, watch this, r squared to be this. Well, it's meant to be x. These were thetas, in fact. They were thetas, sorry. All right. Please have a look at my pattern. What is the maximum value going? Didn't I take the coefficient there? Right? Added it to that. Didn't I do that? Look at that. Isn't that 1 plus 3? 30, 12. <laughs> and you get it to be 13. Why is the maximum going? Why would it always? Can't go one because you've got it squared as well. So those little things that are easy in grade ten to show them because you've got the time. You don't actually have the time in grade ten. You don't have the time because you're trying to do identities a whole lot. So all I wanted you to really take away from this workshop was the fact that if you can please try to spend more time on trigonometry in grade 10, you will improve your trigonometry 100%. It is key to them doing well in the trick, is this grounding, which we all know that we go through it far too quickly. So I think that's all I've got to offer. Okay. Yeah. So. <laughs>